This is Professor BRB, and today we will be practicing a skill that is at the heart and soul of Adobe Illustrator, and that is vector drawing with the pen tool. We will be drawing this shell, and if you don't have my template, you can download it for free at www.artpoints.net. When you get your template, um, you can open up the file and look in the layers panel and you'll see we have several layers here that we'll be uh, using. We're going to first view this in outline form and you can see if you follow this line around with your eye that this is a closed shape that is drawn with one continuous line and uh, we'll be following along and doing this together and I will walk you through every single step so that uh, you are guaranteed to be successful. So I'm going to turn this layer off, go back to preview, and turn on the template layer. And I want to make sure that I am in the My Work layer. Um, you might wish to open up the Graphic Styles panel and make sure that you select this graphic style, which is called cyan drawing line, and that will give you a cyan line and no fill, which will make our job a little bit easier. So first we're going to choose our pen tool, and you will note that if you hold your mouse down and come out to the edge, that the pen tool is actually a suite of four tools, and we'll be discussing the use of all of these tools a little bit later. Let's just zoom right in and find our start point here. Select your pen tool, which is the very first, and go to the start point right here, uh, which is a red dot. We are going to first draw out, and then we're going to follow the spiral all the way back in. So you're going to click on the square point and pull out to the little round point. If you hold down your shift key, it'll constrain your handles to straight. That has created an anchor point and a handle, but we haven't actually drawn a line yet. To do that, we must click on our second point. By the way, release your shift key here or it won't click where you want it to. And we're going to drag down again. As I said, if you hold down your shift key, it will constrain it to straight. And this is our first line here. Click on your next square, and once again, holding your pen tool, I mean your shift key, drag out, click and drag, holding the shift key while you drag, click and drag. So once again, we click and drag, and notice as we get to the larger part of the spiral, we are dragging further and further. And this reveals something important about the pen tool. If you drag in the direction of the curve you're planning to make, I'm going to hold my shift key down there to level that, and you drag a long distance, click and drag for a longer curve, and you drag a shorter distance or a shorter curve. Now, if you're a little bit off, like I was there, don't worry about it because we can come back and edit and fix everything later. And uh, vector editing is a very important part of drawing in Adobe Illustrator. So let's just go and click and drag. Click and drag just a short distance here. Click and drag. And we've already made it to the outside of our shell. Let's scroll down a little bit here. And note that as you get further out of the spiral, that you tend to draw your handles out a little bit longer. And don't worry if you have a few little inaccuracies there because we'll be fixing those later. Always dragging in the direction of the curve that you would like to make. 
Now we've been making smooth points, and I'll explain more about what that means later. But right now we need here a corner point because we want to go from a smooth, around kind of a sharp corner. And what we need to do is access the convert direction point or convert anchor point tool that's right up here. And we can do that by holding down our option key or on a PC our alt key. And you'll notice my cursor turns into a little wedge and I can grab that handle and just drag it up and that converts my point to a corner point. So now I can go to my next point, click and drag. I need another corner point here, so I hold down my Option or my Alt key, and I grab that handle, whoops, I grab that handle, and just pull it up there. And now I have another corner uh, point. So just put this down here. So once again, Oops, I lost my connection there. And if that happens to you, don't worry about it. You just go back to where you were. And if, uh, as I hover over, you can see the little line appears on my pen tool. That's fine. Just click and drag. And you're connected in a continuous line again. Click and drag. I'm going to hold down my shift key to level it. Click and drag. Click and drag. You can see we're starting to drag shorter distances as we get more towards the center of the spiral. Click and drag. Click and drag. Getting down to the tight inside here now. shorter and shorter drags until finally we make it to our end point. I'm going to turn my template off for a moment here and you will notice that I still have a gap here and I want to close this gap up just very quickly because I'm going to use uh, an ellipse from the ellipse tool to complete this and I'm going to need two closed shapes, and you'll see why that is in a moment. So with my white arrow, my direct selection tool, I'm just going to select those two points and make sure nothing else is selected, and go to Object, Path, Join. And that closes my shape very nicely. Turning on and in my Layers panel, this Circle Template layer, I'm now going to go to my ellipse tool, which is hiding under your rectangle tool. So you can find it there. And I just want to create an ellipse or a circle, actually a perfect circle. So if I hold down my shift key, that constrains me to a perfect circle. If I didn't place it just perfectly, I can hold down my space bar and move it around here. I want the top to level with the top of my spiral here. Beautiful. Now what I have here is two closed shapes. And I want to merge them into one shape. So as I select, let me zoom in on this so you can see what's happening. I take my black arrow, my selection tool, I select both shapes, and then choose my Shape Builder tool. If you are in an older version of Illustrator that does not have a Shape Builder tool, I think CS4 and previous, you can do this with the Pathfinder, which you'll find in the window menu. So I'm going to just select the Shape Builder. It's one of my favorite new tools. And as I mouse over, I see that um, this kind of lights up in a grid. And I just have to click my mouse button down and drag across till my whole shape, uh, shell is highlighted. And then release. Turn off my template here. Now you can see I have one continuous line. All that remains is to do a little editing and fill it up with some color. So I'm going to go to my direct selection tool and let's look a little bit at what we've done here. Um, we have made uh, anchor points here and 
Almost all of them, with a few exceptions, are smooth points. And what that means is I call them rocker points, meaning if I move one side, the other side moves as well. This may seem very difficult to cope with at first, but it's important to maintain these as rocker points so that you will get a smooth curve. And the handles allow us to do a lot of fine editing. So you can pull your handles here. And you'll notice that I've placed my points. You could kind of call it on the points of a compass. Notice I can move my points at this point with my direct selection tool, my white arrow, and I can pull my handles to get a perfect match here. I can uh, add points if I were to wish to. I don't really want to right here, but if I wanted to, I can add more points. For example, over here, I have a very long curve, and I might decide that I needed an extra point here. That's easy to do. I have an Add Anchor Point tool here. All I have to do is select that tool, click anywhere on my line, and it adds a point. I can pull that back. Uh, so I can add points anywhere I want, and I can also delete points with the Delete Anchor Point tool. Oops, a daisy. Come on. There we go. So you can um, you can add, you can delete points. You really can fix any kind of a problem that you might have made. So just kind of go ahead and do some fine editing here. And this is one of the very important skills of vector drawing is learning how to fix things. Spirals are actually a very challenging. Uh, a very challenging thing to draw because your eye, it's like a perfect circle, your eye will instantly detect any uh, kind of an inaccuracy. Um, so going back to the placement of the points, notice that I've placed them on the edges of the curve. You can kind of picture the points of a compass where uh, you have regular curves like this. You try to put your points at basically north, south, east, and west. I just do a little bit down here. I'm going to hold my shift key, I mean my space bar. And when I go down here, I can move my points around, correct any little inaccuracies. And you notice this is a corner point here. So I can get around that corner. And this is a corner point here. But other than the ones in the very center, all of my other points should be smooth points. And the, one of the most common mistakes people learn when they learn vector drawing is doing everything in corner points. And uh, there's a few ways you can do that. If you're uh, doing a curve here, for example, you can go back and kill one of your corner points. And that might, like this, this is wrong, don't do it this way, uh, if you're trying to make a curve because you will never really get a smooth curve if you have corner points on your curves, no matter how hard you try. So remember to keep rocker points, smooth points on your curves, and corner points on your corners, and you won't go far wrong. So now let's just uh, take a look at what we've got here. And all I want to do, I'm going to turn off my template here. Uh, all I want to do now is fill my drawing with the gradient. So if you go to your swatches panel, I have created a, a shell radial gradient here, a circle gradient. You can just select that. And it's not quite where I want it to be. But if I go to my tool panel and choose the gradient tool, you'll see that this gradient tool pops up. And I can move the center of the gradient to the center of my shell so that it's going to coordinate a little bit better. And I can do all kinds of stuff here. I can move this out. I can move it in. I can access the individual sliders. If I want to change a color, I can do that. And there we go. Uh, only other thing I want to do is get rid of that uh, cyan outline that was helpful to me while I was drawing. And there we go.
there is our shell and thank you for drawing with the pen tool with me today. Uh, I urge you to practice and practice because learning the pen tool is a lot like learning a musical instrument. You just have to practice and get comfortable with it. So I wish you all the best in your pen tool efforts. Signing off, this is Professor BRB.